how to stimulate uh, muscle growth through resistance training. Let's talk about that. Cool. Cool. What do you want to talk about? With I want to talk training? about all of it. So I want to talk <laughs> about uh, strength versus muscle mass. We're seeing in the literature that strength maybe outweighs muscle mass as it relates to longevity. I think when it comes to, I just wrote a, a paper that was just published in, in the Journal of Aging on resistance training for mild cognitive impairment patients mm, and mm. obviously Alzheimer's disease. And we see that both strength and resistance training plays a very big role in, in the health yeah. of your brain. Yeah, but let's, let's separate the two or we can combine them and let's just understand how we can gain more muscle mass. If you're going to the gym and you're training in terms of sets and reps, wouldn't it just, wouldn't you be increasing both anyway? <laughs> yeah, for sure. Like the, everybody has heard the term sarcopenia. Yes. Right. But nobody says the term dynapenia. Oh, what's dynapenia? <laughs> dynapenia Di is strength loss, age related strength loss. Why don't we know about that? Why isn't <laughs> on just... the internet dynapenia? <laughs> Dina D Y N A. Okay. Penia. And strength losses as we reach advanced ages are actually greater than size losses. So strength and power losses. Um, Over the age of 45, I think the percentage mm -hmm. is is quite it's significant. It moves into oh, yeah. like the, yeah, like 2.5, I think is it? Per Roughly, yeah. yeah. It's like the, oh. the strength losses that happen do, uh, it, it, there are about double than the, than the size losses that, that happen. And that kind of makes sense. But um, because, you know, if, if size losses happen, we, we'd see frailty happen like really rapidly but mm. you know frailty is almost a, a more insidious mm. type of thing muscle size and strength losses so we when we consider what the body needs to do to survive it, it it just needs to adapt to whatever imposed stress that you lay on top of it so if you're not imposing the stress of uh of training the stress of, of movement of physical activity then your body really has no reason to waste any energy on well surviving. <laughs> yeah. And so, so yeah, resistance training is vital. And I'm not talking about your classic put on your fluorescent striped, you know, tights and, and, and string a tank top and then go do the bodybuilding um, routine, but find some type of resistance training that you enjoy and that you can cover the major muscle groups through the course of a workout or through the course of a week and then just continue that at, at your own pace, you know, mm -hmm. progressively, um, to to a, you know a, a reasonable degree of whatever the individual goal is, and then that's the way that you fight Father Time. And you can look at the the spectrum of goals that people have with resistance training. There's sort of this general population goal of okay, how much training do I can I get away with? You know, how what's the minimum effective dose for me to be able to do? still be healthy. Um, and then you have another group saying, how can I look freaking awesome? You know, when I'm 50 or 60 or 70 or whatever, how can I, how can I look spectacular? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, those are two totally different populations, mm. uh, both legitimate <laughs> yeah. goals, you know, whatever drives you, whatever fires your light and motivates you to go train. Um, but the minimum effective dose for resistance training uh, to maintain a healthy degree of uh, muscle size and strength is pretty low. It's, it's kind of surprisingly low. Well, that's maintain. Maintain, Yeah. right. And what is surprisingly yeah. low? Three to six sets per muscle group per week. Oh, that's like one one session. Yeah, basically. <laughs> basically, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so that, that kind of low, that would be minimum effective dose for if you're forced to deload but you kind of want to maintain – or if you're somebody who absolutely detests the idea of resistance training or strength training and you really kind of want to know what's the minimum that mm. in the literature is shown to maintain a certain amount of strength, well, it would be roughly three to, six, uh, three to six sets per muscle group per week with those sets taken to relative, you know, failure. I was going to say, is that like at an 80% of one RM? Like on the sixth rep, you're really struggling. On the sixth rep, yes. Yeah. You're basically pushing to momentary muscular failure. Yeah. Okay. So what about if we want to increase strength? By the way, maintaining, even if you've got a loss of 2.5 per decade over the age of 40, mm -hmm. um, that, that doesn't make sense. 
Does it make <laughs> sense to you? If you're just maintaining but you're also losing. So you, you always want to be increasing. I think to it's meet important. the rate of loss. It's important to strive to increase. Um, there, there is an inevitable drop in strength as we, like, let's say, approach our 80s. It's, it's tough to be as robust and amazing as we are right now. You know? mm. But I agree with you. Um, striving to increase strength is, if you do it safely, I think, I think that's optimal. Okay. So. Yeah. Okay. So what are we, what are we looking at in terms of increasing? Then? Okay. So the. One of the healthiest ways to train for strength is to train for size. And so what what I mean by that is if you take an approach of, okay, my goal is muscle hypertrophy, you're going to gain strength anyway, but you're also kind of getting these metabolic benefits of mm. training in zones that are relatively in the, in the middle of the energy continuum. Do here. you use five zones? Um, well, that, that's more of a cardio. Yes. It's more of a cardio thing. I know, thing. you're not a cardio guy. <laughs> I, you know, I'm, I'm fine with that. But like in the context of strength training, it's like you can either train like a power lifter where you are, you know, we're talking like you're spending a lot of time in, in the 80 to 100% of one RM of, of your single rep max. Or you can just, you know, really low ball it where you're looking at, you know, 50, 40%, you know, of, of your one RM. But the, the interesting thing with the research on muscle hypertrophy and loading is that you can do sets that are as high as like 30-ish reps to failure, which correlate with roughly 30% of your one RM. But if you take those sets to failure, to, you know, momentary muscular failure fatigue, then you can get similar hypertrophic results as if you trained in the classic 60 to 80% of 1RM. So people who are tiptoeing around injuries, people who are incapable for one orthopedic reason or another, incapable of training heavy, they can still take lighter loads like 20 to 30 reps just take it to failure. And then you will have a similar growth response to the people who are training in that a little bit sweeter spot, the 60 to 85 ish percent of one rep max mm. for training for muscle hypertrophy. And the total amount of sets per week, this was our recent systematic review that was done. I'm, I'm forgetting the, the author, unfortunately, but it was done within the last couple of years. Um, people who are seeking to maximize muscle gains would be doing somewhere between 12 to 20 sets per muscle group per week. And do you, would you suggest when you go to the gym, look, it's like I was mentioning to you offline, like just how crazy my week has been. I'm a bit disoriented because it's, you know, I live on the East Coast, I'm on the West Coast, it's just driving is a whole new, I feel like it's a whole new skill. Um, and so my time is limited. Mm -hmm. So would you suggest um, isolating muscle groups at the gym or would you suggest just for the average person who wants to increase muscle mass and strength, mm -hmm. go do full body or maybe just do upper body one day, lower body one day? You know, there's this traditional way that people go about it where they start beginners off with a full body mm -hmm. two to three times a week. Yeah. And then as they get a little bit more proprioceptively, neurologically, metabolically oriented with the whole thing, then we kind of start specializing and start splitting things up. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm cool with that. I think that's a fine way to go about it um, because as you are able to put more effort into training various body parts, then it can be pretty taxing the prospect of training the entire body in a single training bout. And so what most people settle in on is not necessarily most people. Some people love their full body training things. So, so I, I would preface, take a couple steps back and preface this by saying you should do what you like and prefer and look forward to. But some people are not going to love the idea of training the full body in a single workout. They will much prefer doing something like an upper body, lower body, upper body, lower body, sort of alternating type of split. Um, and there are other people still who would do even further splits where you isolate the muscle groups even further 
through the course of the week where mm. you're just training one or two body parts in a given workout, almost like what, you know, what the bodybuilders in the 90s used to do. Now, thankfully, the state of the evidence on frequency of training a given muscle group per week shows that is the least important factor. It's almost the equivalent of um, protein distribution compared to you know hitting the t daily total. So hitting the weekly total for volume for set volume, you've accomplished the cake. Getting frequency right, like how many times you hit that muscle group in the course of the week, that is the icing on the cake. That should be individualized. And kind of by t default, people with greater total weekly volumes, they're kind of defaulted to splitting the body up more. Because for example, most people um, at the intermediate level and in the working world who have like recreational goals with, with muscle gain, but they're pretty serious about it. They can top out at somewhere between let's say 12 and 16 sets per muscle group per week. Now, it's much easier to hit six to eight sets per muscle group in a given workout than it is to cram all of that into a single session. So they're almost defaulted to it being much more productive okay. for them to hit those and in, in split up in, in, at two different workouts in the week for that given muscle group. Whereas somebody who's just minimal effective dose, you know, three to six ish, yeah. I can do all, I can do all this in, in a single, single workout. So bam.